That's an awesome revelation. One of the things I say is that revelation is the greatest asset to my faith when the light bulb goes off. So from what you just said, I'm taking something that I often hear, um, heard Kim Clement say, he had that song, I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. Yes, yeah. that's it right there, oh. that's it right there. Glory to God. And you know, when you said um, unresolved issues, mm -hmm. you know, and the things that happen in a child's life and sometimes parents don't pay attention. Let's talk, mm -hmm. let's take that and put it in today's timing with this suicide, okay? There's mm -hmm. so many kids committing suicide. Yeah. Parents aren't paying attention. Mm -hmm. Parents aren't getting the clues. And then some of us are too ashamed to say, um, well, you know what? It could be a generational curse. Mm -hmm. Let's go deeper. Because yeah. some parents, at maybe at one point in time in their life, may have been on drugs, alcohol, or whatever, and it became and wanted to, them to commit suicide, they had the thought that came into their mind, but it, they didn't do it. Yeah. So even though the thought came, hmm, it hung around. Yeah. And then it said, okay, I'm gonna find your child. I'm gonna find, okay, if your child going through a moment of depression, or even if your child is in an environment or in a situation, if there's an opening, I'm coming in. That's right. And then that's, right. that's what happens with the child. And we don't even, and we miss the signs and we miss the clues. Talk to me about that. So let me say this. So my brother actually committed suicide in, 2000, in 2007. And when, when that took place, I had a lot of questions uh, as to why he would do something like that. So let me speak about that situation first, and then I'll go deeper. Mm -hmm. So my brother, he called me that Wednesday, and he basically told me that there was this girl who was pregnant for him, and he was trying to find a job, and, uh, you know, all these things were going on. He was like, yeah, you know, I, I really want to be a great father to this kid and all this kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Well, my, my brother committed suicide that Friday. And we found out that the child wasn't even his that the girl had. And so there are situations that happen in people's lives that cause them to want to give up. But this is the thing that I always share with people is this, especially when you're a parent, because I'm a, I'm a parent of six children. And I, and I talk to my kids all the time. And I, and I ask them, when you look at your life, what is it that you see? And when I say, what is it that you see? I'm not talking about your sight. I'm talking about vision. Mm. So I ask my kids, what, are the, what is the vision that God has given you for your life? Because a lot of people, they go off of an assumption. They go off of what other people want them to do. And when you do that, those are the moments in time where people feel like, what's the use? I'm not measuring up to what they wanted anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing what they wanted me to do. I'm not saying what they wanted me to say. And so let's go, let's go a little bit deeper on that. So when I look at the suicide with these kids now, because I, I work in the schools, and when I talk to these kids, they say this all the time. I wish somebody would just listen to what I had to say. I wish somebody would just listen. Because most of the time, see, we as parents, and sometimes in the schools, we think that kids want somebody to talk to them. But they're like, no. I don't want somebody to talk to me because I'm, I'm having people talk to me on a daily basis. Now I need somebody to listen. Let's go deeper with that. So a lot of times when we look at our relationship with God, we think that it's always about us talking and asking for things. But God is like, no, that's not a relationship. You're yes. placing commands on me. And God says, I don't even need you to petition me the way the church has told you to petition me. Because God says, what I will do is I will download things into you, vision, mission. I will download those things into you. And what will happen is I'm giving you what to pray for. Okay? Because, see, sometimes we're praying selfish prayers, which are against God's will. And then we'll say, God, I want you to do this for me now. Well, God says, I'm not going to do that now. I may never do that because the thing that you're asking is against what I have for you. And he's saying the things that I have for you are beyond what you could even think, ask, or imagine. So what happens is we have these, these kids, again, who want to talk to somebody to say what it is that they see. But when they don't have that, mm -hmm. they feel like everything is kind of bottled up and, and becoming stifled. And therefore, it stifles their growth and their 
Think about it. Their mental capacity seems to be stifled. And what God is saying is, I want you to learn from me how to handle each other so yes. that we don't have individuals who want to give up on life and want to commit suicide. Because think about it. Most kids, when they look at relationship with God, they base it on a relationship with their parents. And if yes. their parents are always placing all of these demands and telling them how wrong they are and what you need to stop doing and all this, a lot of times those children, they say, well, I don't want to have a relationship with God because God may treat me the same way. That is the, that is the true essence mm -hmm. of why people don't want to be here anymore because they feel like nobody's ever there to listen to them. 